after the age of intuition and its profound heights of spiritual realization, consciousness was on a descending course of evolution. In this downward movement, a reasoning intelligence emerged around 500 BCE onwards. In India, as well in Greece and China, the faculty of reason, logic and philosophical methods were replacing the mystical and intuitive methods of the previous cycles. But in India, unlike other cultures, this effort was never dissociated from the spiritual motive of the previous cycles due to the great work done by the Upanishadic seers. It was a birth time and youth of the seeking intellect and, as in Greece, philosophy was the main instrument by which it labored to solve the problems of life and the world. Science too developed, but it came second, only as an auxiliary power. The ancient mantric language, which Sri Aurobindo referred to as Deva Bhasha, had already fragmented into many vernaculars. Grammarians like Panini tried to purify and reconstruct the ancient language. This purified and reconstructed form was called Sanskrit. Everything else became known as Prakrit. The algorithmic and generative grammar of Sanskrit provided a solid foundation for developing the linguistic precision required for philosophical inquiry. With it came the Sutra literature, concise and precise logical expressions that were of scientific nature, unlike the Vedas and the Upanishads. The original intuitive and integral process and knowledge of the Upanishads fragmented into six major schools of philosophy and epistemology. The fundamental perception, separating, narrowed itself and became the Uttara Mimansa of Badrayana. The discriminative analysis, separating, narrowed itself and became Sankhya of Kapila. The psychological experimentation, separating, narrowed itself and became Yoga of Patanjali. The physical analysis, separating, narrowed itself and became Vaisheshika of Kanada. The analysis of discriminative processes separating narrowed itself and became Nyaya of Gautama. The application in formulas of life action separating narrowed itself extremely and became the Purva Mimansa of Jaimini. Each of the six systems arrogated to themselves the status of complete knowledge. Besides them, two major religions were born, Buddhism and Jainism. Systems of knowledge and world views differentiated themselves in terms of Vedic and non-Vedic. On a political level, this period saw the attempt of Alexander from Macedonia to invade India. In response to this new threat, 
with the statesmanship of Chanakya and Chandragupta, the Mauryan Empire rose up, encompassing most of India. The successive empires that followed protected India from invasions for another thousand years. Emperor Ashoka of Mauryan dynasty chose Buddhism to be his path and made it his mission to spread the cultural influence of Indian civilization across Southeast and Northwest Asia. Meanwhile, the notions of Dharma and Shastra dominated political and social discourse. Two national epics, Ramayana of Valmiki and Mahabharata of Vyasa, took birth, covering the entire geographic area of India in its narrative. Both the epics based their stories on ancient legendary kings and their role in establishing dharma in the society. The Gita of Mahabharata brought in a whole new synthesis out of the fragmented systems of knowledge. The spiritual wisdom of the Vedas and Upanishads were given a new form accessible to the common man. These two epics were destined to shape the entire civilization for the coming two millennia. They deeply imprinted the ideal of spiritual purpose and self-realization in the social life of Indian people. It was a time of massive social construction, not only in terms of large empires, but also of philosophies, religions, epics, cosmology, astronomy, medicine, mathematics, and social sciences with detailed systematization and codification. They laid solid intellectual foundations for a deep and rich spiritual culture. They powerfully directed the collective mind of Indian civilization towards her spiritual mission. This was the time when the soul of India reached her deep maturity and wide creative capacity.